Hallelujah. Amen. We come to you, Lord Jesus, thanking you for another day. Pray that you would be with us through the service this evening. Give us something, Lord, that we can look to and see and know that, God, you're revealing your word to us. Let us eat the scroll, Lord. Let us see that this is an age where the Son of Man came and he brought a scroll and he opened it. Lord, he said, eat the whole book. Yes. It's our only way to get past the, de the, the death angel, Lord. Yes. Ezekiel, you told him to eat that scroll and to eat it all. And then there went an angel throughout the camp, slaughtering and killing. God, we thank you for letting us go into this scroll, letting us eat and see it all. For now, as the death angel rides through the camp, spreads the denominational lies throughout the world and throughout the message we know better we thank you pray that you'd show us these things in jesus christ's name amen amen you can be seated it's good to, good to be back and um i'm not sure what i've done with my handkerchief i had it i might have laid it in there when i was So we're nearing our, our weekend, and I don't know, you know, I don't know how many will be here, and it doesn't really matter to me how many. Uh, we'll, we'll have a, a good weekend service. I know Brother Wesley said he would be coming in tomorrow night, but he's going back home Saturday evening. His people want to have their own Easter service, and I don't blame him a bit. I told him, I said, I'll never, unless I'm overseas or something, I'll never leave and I'll, uh, we'll always have an Easter service here. It's uh, one of the more special times of the year um, as far as for services, and, and I know our people want to have them. So we might not always have special meetings, but it'll be special to us, <laughs> and we'll be here having our services. Um, so we've gone through the seals, and... Um, we know that Brother Branham called it a six-sealed scroll. We know it wasn't, the scroll was not seven seals, the scroll was six seals. And the scroll, uh, the seventh seal is what opened those six seals. The seventh seal is Christ himself. And um, as, we, as we're nearing, we, we've gone through the scroll. So I wanted to uh, go over to Revelation 6 tonight. If you want to turn with me, and we're just, we're just going to talk a little bit about the scroll and kind of a a lesson a little bit, and let us to see what we are supposed to be eating. Of Brother Branham said in the seals book, he said that this opening of the seals put us back in the same position as Adam and Eve. He said that um, it put us into a position to um, go back beyond the sin. You know, when the, when the sin came, there was the fall, and it took us uh, back beyond the fall, and it placed us beyond any sin, beyond anything. So we're in a, we're in a condition now. You say, when did, when did I become that way, Brother Parnell? Uh, you become that way before the world was, when the Lamb was slain. But now we're going through the the act of it, so to speak, or the uh, we're passing through the experience of it so that our knowledge of what happened to us will be uh, not knowledge, but it'll be revelation and understanding. You know, anyone can have knowledge. Anyone can sit down and read the Bible. Anyone can, can pick up a book and read it, and, uh, and you can read how to put a bomb together and put a bomb together and set it off. Knowledge will let you do that. But when you set it off, you will have gained experience. That's right. um, see, and that's what's going on now in, in the world is God is putting us through our experience. You say, Brother Parnell, when, did, uh, when was I put back into the Adam condition? Was that, was that before the world was? Well, you was in that condition before the world was. Um, and you were put back into that condition when you recognized it. Um, you never left it to start with, so to speak. Uh, and going back is like, um, you know, if, some, if someone says, hey, he's getting his memory back. Well, he never lost it. It was there all the time. That's right. But 
there are things happening in a man's life that the memory's coming back. And we think of it as, oh, wow, he's getting his memory back. He lost it. No, it was always there. Um, he's just getting it back. So we were always there. We're just getting it back. We're starting to understand who we are. And um, so when, when, did I, when did I come to this Adam condition? When did I come to this condition where that, um, that um, I, I'm, beyond, I'm back beyond the sin? When you recognized what Jesus Christ did for you. And yes, you were always there, but when you recognize it is when you, when you are awakened or taken back to it. And when did that happen for you? I know when it happened for me. And I'm not talking about a new birth or anything like that. I know when I had uh, my new birth. You don't have a birth on any day. You're an eternal creature. But when you recognize this day and this message... Um, you receive a new understanding. And I know when that happened for me is when I got into these seals and started taking a good look at it. I now can stand here or stand in the middle of any place in the world and any man and any group of message people and I can say, I understand what Brother Branham was talking about. I've got a clear understanding of his message. You know, I couldn't do it. No man taught me to do that. You know what men taught me to do? Listen to them. That's what they taught me. They taught me to, uh, to take their ideas, take their understanding, listen to them. Um, they used certain parts of Brother Branham's message. No man ever went through the seals for me. No man ever wanted to go through the seals. All I ever heard in this message was, well, you know, go over and let's, let's take the church age book because... It's been edited and, and, and all, and I love that church age book, don't get me wrong. It's absolutely perfect, but you'll not understand one thing in that church age book until you understand the opening of the seals. That's right. Amen. And I don't care who you are, you can play around with that church age book, you can memorize it. I did that. I had the church age book, almost every page was marked up. I preached out of it continually because I was taught to go there. And the view of that church age book has completely changed for me when I got into these seals. So, if you want to enter the age that Brother Branham entered, if you want to understand the things that Brother Branham understood, if you want to have a new birth to the new age, then these seals will do it for you. If you're willing to just take what he said and believe it with all your heart. So... I wanted to turn over to Revelation 6, and we've come through the six seals. Now, we're going to go through questions and answers. We're going to go through the seventh seal. But from here on, um, for Brother Branham, once he, once he closed off that sixth seal, he had given the whole book. He had given the picture of the whole scroll. He had revealed everything in it. Amen. Someone said, oh, but you know, no, Brother Parnell, Brother Branham didn't reveal the seventh seal. Well, the seventh seal, if you, if you follow what he said about it, he said, it's silence. Right. And if you follow what he said about it, he said it's the end of a struggling nature. Right. It's the end of time. It's the end of the world. It's the end of this. It's the end of that. It ends, it ends, it ends, it ends, it ends. And then you follow him over into many other things that we'll get into after we get out of the, the last seal. He shows you how the seventh seal brought on up many, many new things. Opening up and opening up. Why? You know, he said in Matthew 24, when we were reading this sixth seal, Brother Branham said in Matthew the 24th chapter, he was talking about the sixth seal, he was talking about how the seals had come down through, and he said Jesus omitted the seventh seal. And then Brother Branham brings us all the way down through, and under the sixth seal, he's in his little room where he stayed, and he's studying, and he catches an understanding, and he says, oh, I can't, I can't tell that. I can't, I, can't say, I can't walk out there and say that to these people. Lord, you know I can't. And he got up, and he went out, and he walked around outside and, uh, and come back in, and he tells that to us, and he says, I can't reveal to you what the Lord showed me. And then he says, as Jesus stood on the Mount of Olives and looked out over Jerusalem and wept and cried for his people, how oft I would have gathered you together. Amen. 
what was God, what was Brother Branham? He was, he was telling them exactly what God had showed him in the room. He got up in that sixth seal. At the end of the sixth seal and in the seventh seal, he said, I've been here all week waiting for somebody to stand up and say, I see it. Well, what was they supposed to see? The coming of the Lord. That he had been prophesying about since the opening of the church ages back in 1960 and 61. He'd been talking about the change of the body. He'd been talking about the resurrection. He'd been talking about the rapture. He said, we've got to have a change of the body. These bodies cannot meet him in the air. He said, we'll, we've got to go to the sky and these bodies... What was he doing? The Lord was showing him that when he finished up that book of Revelations, that they were going to take a trip to Sunset Mountain. And Brother Branham was seeing all these things and he was prophesying it. 1962, December, he stood there. He said, in, on December the 22nd, seven angels come into my room. I seen the vision of it, a great blast. I thought maybe I'd die. I don't know what will happen. On the 23rd of December, he brought it to his people, spoke it to the Branham Tabernacle, and on January the, the uh, 11th, he goes, he's, he goes to Sabina Canyon, and there the king's sword comes into his right hand, and he's standing there looking at it, and the, the voice speaks and said, This is the king's sword. And Brother Branham is, is going through all these things. And then um, on February the 28th, the great cloud appears um, and shows itself for its picture to be taken. That cloud, was, that cloud didn't appear there and disappear. And, and that cloud's not disappeared into the, uh, some place and we'll never see it again. That cloud's still right here. It was here. It hung over Noah's Ark. It hung over Adam and Eve. It hung over the children of Israel. It hung in Acts 1 over the, the saints as Jesus went away. And it come and talked to Paul. I believe Paul just looked right into that cloud in 1963. And in, on, in Acts 9 and in Acts 2, it come and broke itself up into the people. It's the same cloud. It's the theophany. It's Christ. So... He omitted, he said, Jesus omitted the seventh seal. Why? Because it, it, the seventh seal, it was standing right there looking at him. Amen. And the scripture says, the Holy Ghost, or the, it says uh, when he comes, he'll not testify of himself. That he'll testify of another, Christ. So what happened was, when the Holy Ghost is standing right there in front of him, Jesus omitted the seventh seal or omitted the teaching of who he was to hide it, to hide the suffering Messiah, to hide the fact that he was going to die on Calvary, to hide all those things. He did it. He omitted the seventh seal because the seventh seal was right there unfolding himself. And that's what happened to Brother Branham in that room. He seen who he was for sure. He seen... Now listen... In the questions and answers that we're getting ready to go into, there's Brother Branham preaches on this Moses and Elijah so strong. He puts them right there. He puts them opening the seals. He puts them doing all these things. He puts Moses and Elijah's ministry on Sunset Mountain. He does all of that. And then there comes back five questions in the questions and answers on the seals. Five different questions to Brother Branham about Moses and Elijah. And he never one time, never one time put them here in their flesh bodies. Never one time. Right. Why didn't he? That is, I can take you and show you where he sure insinuated that. He never did really come out and say it anywhere ever. But he sure did insinuate that teaching before he opened those seals. But you find out where that Brother Branham in the sixth seal, he found out that he was the Moses and Elijah standing before the people. Amen. And he said, God, I can't... W this is the seventh seal. that i got to omit this. I can't walk out there and tell those people that I'm Moses and Elijah. I can't walk out there and show these people that, that I have an Elijah ministry on me, not only of Malachi 4, but of this fifth Elijah that's to go back on the people when I leave because the Lord showed him he was going to decrease you can read all through his ministry he knew he was going to decrease and leave 
And he talks all the time about it after the opening of the seals, that he would decrease and Christ would increase. He's seen that and he omitted it and walked out there and he said, I've seen it go past me in an unknown tongue. And, it, and, and then he said, as sure as I am standing here, I know what it was. But I can't tell you. <laughs> why did he do that? If he'd have done it, why, it would have confused the world, the present age that he was in. So what did he do? He done everything he could from that, from that opening of the seals on. He done everything he could to show who he was. You know, I heard uh, Lee Vale say one time, and it's the absolute truth when you get into his message. He said, Brother Branham spent 75 to 80 percent of his time at the end of his ministry doing one thing, trying to show the people who he was without coming out and saying it. He was omitting the seventh seal. The seventh seal is revealing what is going on at the present time. Laying it out, revealing it to the people, letting them see it. That's what the seventh seal is all about. He opened the scroll. He showed us everything that had happened. All the horse riders, all the trumpets, the horse riders still riding out, the pale horse is still riding itself out today. The trumpets have sounded. And he showed us how that, how that, that Moses and Elijah ministry had come back. He showed us how the martyr age was over. The 144,000 were sealed away. He showed us all these things in that scroll, and he come right down to where he was going to have to show us absolutely who Revelations 10 was, how that it was, he was going to bring a scroll out, and he was going to hand it to the bride and tell her to eat the whole book that he was the fulfillment, that he was the seventh angel standing there. You know, there was a brother, uh, brother that talked to me in, in, uh, in Boston, and we had, a, we had a meeting, and I had preached, and he was pretty upset over some of these things that I had preached. And So he said, he said to me, he said, Brother Parnell, he said, you're putting a lot of things in there. He said, it looks real good. But he said, you, you, uh, I believe that you are saying things that Brother Branham just didn't come out and say. And I said, well, I can accept that. I said, uh, I said, but if I find in this Bible and in Brother Branham's message where if I add one plus one plus one plus one. I said, if Brother Branham did that, one plus one plus one plus one. I said, can I say that equals four? He said, nope, you can't, not unless he said it. I said, okay, now I understand where you're coming from. I said, now I understand. If, if he proved one plus one plus one plus one was there, we can't say it's four unless he said it's four. He said, that's right. I said, now I heard you preach, and I heard you say that he was Malachi 4. I said, I don't ever want to hear you say that again. Because he never one time said he was Malachi 4. You won't find that in his message. I said, I heard you preach and say he's the seventh angel prophet. I never one time found Brother Branham saying that. He said, oh, but, but you know he said it. I said, oh, no, brother, now. If he didn't say it equal four, don't you say it equal four. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I said, now, if you want to play that game, we'll play it together and let's see how far we go. We don't know if we had a Malachi 4 prophet. We don't know if we had a Revelations 10 prophet. We don't know if the seals really were open. We don't, we don't know a lot of things because what you have to do is look into Brother Branham's message and see where he added it all up. And he might not have said 5 plus 5 is 10, but you ought to have enough revelation and common sense about you to know that 5 plus 5 is 10. So what we find out is people are afraid. They're afraid to go by revelation. That it's like they want to just take a word, take a, something that, that's in a, in a message, and just absolutely no revelation can be added to that. Well, I don't want to go there. I want to look at what Brother Branham said. I want to catch his concept all the way through. I want to see what he said about it. And if we can take that concept and pick up many more things off of it, that is fine with me. So here we have him coming down to the end of the ministry. He, 
He omits the seventh seal, which we'll get into and we'll read it all out and we'll see what all he said about it. But in the seventh seal, he talked about being caught up in the constellation. He talked about uh, the seven angels coming to him. He talked about the prophecy to go to Arizona. He talked about what those angels said to him while he was in the constellation. He talked about how those angels packed him back to Jeffersonville to open those seals. He talked about all those things. What was he talking about? He was talking about the seventh seal, but he omitted. He said, I've seen it all. He said, it passed before me in an unknown language. And he said, I will take it to my grave with me. Well, what did he take to the grave with him? Who he was. The ministry that he was fulfilling. He stood there. You, the, the very closest that he came to it. To just outright saying it was right there in his message in Park Auditorium in Jeffersonville, Indiana, February of 65. He screamed out, this day, this scripture is fulfilled before your eyes. And he said, Malachi 4, Revelation 10. And he was screaming those things out and saying, this day, this scripture is fulfilled before your eyes. And he was doing his best to show them. He talked about the priest that came up with the book that was open. He talked about everything. But... He had, to, uh, he, he had to omit or let it pass by in an unknown tongue to the people. Uh, and, 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 uh, and what happened was, what was that unknown tongue? All the insinuations of who he was. All the insinuations, all the things that he was saying about the judgment that was hanging there on Sunset Mountain. He said, the judge has come back in Isaiah 61. The last half of that scripture is being fulfilled. But he didn't go in and say, and that's my ministry. Wake up, bride, that's me. See, he had to omit that seventh seal because it was standing right in front of him. And that's the same thing Jesus did in Matthew 24 when he stood there and he would scream out and he would tell them who he was. Malachi 4, you've seen the last sign to the church. Melchizedek stand with his back turned and call... But he didn't turn around and look at him and say, and that's me and that's my ministry. And that's what God's doing through me. And you need to recognize this ministry. This is the seventh seal. The six seals are finished and this is the seventh seal living before you now. He couldn't do that. He had to take it to his grave. But we don't. <laughs> I'm not taking it to any grave. I'm preaching it. I'm looking at it. I'm understanding it. And here in this, this uh, sixth chapter, I believe it is, and uh, the, fourth, the uh, 12th verse, or the, the 14th verse, and the, and the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together. And every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth and the great men, and the rich, and the men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every freeman, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? The heavens departed as a scroll. We come to the end of the book. It was all wide open. The book had been opened up. Where did this take place? Where did this sixth seal happen? This sixth seal took place there in, uh, on March the 24th, I believe it was, or 23rd, whenever that sixth seal was preached. 1963. 323. 1963. Here comes Brother Branham out and begins to lay out the end of the book, to lay out the prophet's message, to lay out Malachi 4, to lay out Revelations 10, to show how the two prophets tied in, to show how the 144,000 had been sealed, to show how the martyr days were over, to show all the way down through how that the body had taken on a body change and had moved from intercessory over into perfection, over into Son of David ministry. Christ taking the throne. To show all of these things that were going on, that prophet walked behind the pulpit and stood there and opened it up to the very last seal 
the sixth seal, and then the heavens departed as a scroll. What it's saying is everything came into plain view. Amen. And when everything came into plain view, to the bride, that was a wonderful day. But to the rest of the world, that was a horrible day. To the rest of the world, they couldn't accept it. They ran. They hid. To the ones who did not want to accept William Branham's message, they ran and hid and called for the rocks and the mountains to fall on them. It was a day of wrath. It was a day when the coming of the Lord was so clear that everyone seen it. Amen. The heavens departed as a scroll. What have we done right here in the last six to eight months of going through this seals book? The first year that we were here in this assembly, we were going back to Brother Branham's message, back to Brother Branham's message, taking a good look at what he said, correcting many things. Amen. And I kept saying to myself, Lord, I'm seeing many things, but sometimes things just don't tie up together. Sometimes I still have a thought over here, and right while I'm preaching it, I, I realize that it's, it's wrong. And I kind of back off, and that's the way it was a year ago, and I would go over here, and I'm like Brother Brandon was. He said one time he didn't understand hell. He said he didn't preach on the subject for four years until God showed him more about hell. And that was just about where I was at on many subjects. I was seeing a lot of things, and then all of a sudden here would come something sideways, some old doctrine, and, uh, and, and I would be fighting over that for weeks in my mind, trying to figure it out. I said, Lord, how can a man, how can a man pick up Brother Random's thoughts on this day? And the Holy Spirit began to deal with me and said, go to where he entered this day. I thought, okay, the church age book. I thought, we'll, we'll go through the church age book. And he said, you got the same old thinking on the church age book that you had before. Because that's what I was going to do. I was going to start, I'd even said it here, I was going to start in the church ages. And the Holy Spirit said, you got the same old thinking that you had on it before. He said, go to where the prophet entered this age and get in that book. I said, okay, the seals. And when I did, it changed everything. It's, it was the scroll that you had to eat to come in to the new day. And we as a church have ate that scroll. Now, we don't have as many here because some of them didn't like the whole scroll. That's up to them. You know, some food's too rich for some people. And I understand that. You know, it makes you, it gets you nauseated, it gets you sick and everything else. But then there are other people who this food is not too rich for. Some could not take the shoestring through the shoe latch. Pentecostal babies. So they went their way. And some were eagles who could eat eagles food. And it was not too rich. You know, when you're back in church age thinking, think about it, you know, when there, there were four beasts, and those four beasts was, was uh, the lion, the ox, the face of a man, and an eagle. And that eagle takes you out of the church ages into this new day. Now, the first one was a lion. Now, you know that when a lion is first birthed, what does a lion do? Does it eat meat? No. It drinks milk. And when the, when the ox was first birthed, it doesn't eat meat. It drinks milk. And when the man, humans... Our first birth, they don't eat meat, they drink milk. But when you come to the eagle age, an eagle never drinks milk. From the very first day of its birth, it is eating meat. That's what it does. That's its nature. That's everything about it. It eats meat. And that's what we are doing now. We are eating meat and it's strong and not everything can gather around it. But this is the carcass, and eagles do gather around it to eat one with another. That's right. So we see this. Now, we're down to this great scroll opening up at the end of the sixth seal. The heavens open. The scroll opens up. What is the Scripture saying? Everything is exposed. Jesus said when light comes, He said they hate the light and love the darkness. So they run to the darkness. They run to the old tradition. They run to the old dogma. They run to the old thinking. 
They run back and say, oh, don't, don't, don't take my millennium away. Don't, don't, take, my, don't take my resurrection away. My, so somebody's body's got to get up out of the dirt. Don't take these things away. Don't take my... my, my uh, somebody's got to suffer. Don't take my hell from me. Don't take all these things from me. I, I gotta, I gotta have something. I gotta, I gotta be able to. And and what they do is they go back to that old doctrine. Whereas an eagle, he may wrestle around a little while, but he'll throw it down and he'll move on. And he'll look at everything and he'll say, "I believe this with all of my heart." And the heavens open as a scroll, and everything is exposed, and you see everything that runs to light, and you see everything that runs to darkness. You see it for yourself. You see how people act. You see how natures act. You see how people act over doctrines, over, over the message of the hour, over the opening of the seals. I've heard everything. I've gotten emails. Brother Parnell, who do you think you are? The next prophet opening the seals again? And no. But I think that the prophet that we had wanted us to go into that scroll and find out exactly where we're standing at for our day exactly where we're at for our time he wanted us to see these things or he wouldn't have taken he didn't just stand up there for for seven or eight services just to fill a few nights you know he didn't have people drive from all over the world so he could just stand up there and guesswork angels packed him back here made him understand these things and came into his room each day that's what he said came into his room each day and talked to him about these things. And in the Feast of the Trumpets, our prophet told us, he said, it is a brand new revelation. It is, it is on a field that we have never known before and perfectly with the Scripture. Amen. So what do we have? We've got a new day that nobody wants to enter into or can't enter into until they pick up that revelation that opens that door. You've got to receive the key of David. We read that here in the, in the third chapter, I believe it is. The key of David was there to open the door in that sixth church age. What were we moving into? A son of David ministry. So the scroll's open now. The scroll is open. Now, when someone walks up to you now, and begins to talk to you about Brother Random's message. And they begin to, they begin to place good living, because there are many in the message that do that. They begin to place good living as your absolute. And they begin to tell you, oh, we know who's this and who's that by their fruits. You know, the way they live, the way they walk, the way they act. You know better. You know there's only one thing. And the fruit, Brother Random said, is the word of the age. Amen. That's what the fruit is. He was very clear in those seals that, that it's the word of the age. And when you eat it, you accept the word of the age. And when you reject it, you're lost. And that is a fruit. When somebody now walks up to you and they begin to talk to you about a millennium, a thousand years added on to eternity somewhere out there in the future, you as a church, you know better than that. You know better. You know the millenniums are behind us when it comes to church ages. Right in the future home and right in the seals, Brother Branham was feeding us and telling us about this great millennial age to come. And in the third exodus, he called it an eternal millennium. And in the future home, he was talking about the millennium and he changed it to church ages right in the book. Oh, you just black and white. We went through it. And then he changed the church ages to watches and he showed us that the millenniums we're actually the church ages and the watches behind us. And this day that we're going into is an eternal day. This day that we've entered is an eternal day. And the scroll is wide open. The heavens are open. And the minute you start teaching this or talking this somewhere, what happens? They run for the rocks. They run for everything and try to grab. Oh, but, and they'll have a quote too. Don't you think they won't have a quote, man? They got them. Janus and Jambres. Moses, he wasn't the only one who had a rod. He cast his rod down. It turned into a serpent. And man, they had him too. He cast his rod down over there in the, in the unveiling of God in 1964. You'll walk up with that Moses ministry on you and you'll say, 
We're in a son of David age. Oh, no, we're not. Oh, yeah, we are. Brother Branham said that. The unveiling of God, 1964. All you got to do is go over there and read it. And you cast that rod out there. Man, they'll come right back with a rod and say, Ah, oh, Brother Branham said out in the future there'd be a millennium. The son of David is set on the throne out there. And the son of David don't have anything to do with us. And don't you think that rod ain't there? That's right. It's there. But that ain't my rod. That's right. <laughs> that ain't my revelation. Amen. That ain't my understanding. And I believe that Brother Branham knew what he was talking about when he said those things. And he was a prophet. And when we... They'll have the exact quotes. They'll have everything to counteract you. And then, you, what, you know what you've got to have then? You better have the heavens and the scroll open to you. It better be wide open or else you're going to stand there and look at it and say, what in the world's going on here? When the scroll is wide open and you see the promise of His coming in your heart and you know it's there and you know that the King is sitting and they're living in you and you know that the King's sword is coming out of your mouth and you know that you're conquering everything around you, and you know that the heavens are open like a scroll, and you see this book like you've never seen it before, they can throw all the rods they want down right in front of you, and it won't mean a thing. Amen. You'll wait with patience and watch yours eat that up. Amen. Just like Moses did. That's right. But Janice and Jambres will try, and they will have the quotes from the prophet right. in their hand. And they'll turn the water to blood and they'll bring fleas and they'll bring lice and they'll do this and they'll do that. And you better have plenty of patience to just say, well, you know, on top of all that knowledge, I got a revelation. That's right. I got an understanding of what's going on here. So heavens. So what does he do? Now this scroll, the six sealed scroll said, and... And the heavens departed as a scroll when it is rolled together. And every mountain and island were moved out of their places. When the scroll is open, it interrupts all things. Right. Everything. Now let's go over here to Revelations 10. It says... But in the days of the voice, 10-7, of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished, as he hath declared to his servants the prophets. Amen. And the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again and said, Go and take the little book. What little book? The little book that was in his hand in Revelation 5, and that he opened in Revelation 6. Amen. When he opened that book, it was, it was a little book or a scroll. And he said, go and take the little book. Now we understand what the little book is, don't we? Go and take the little book, take the scroll, and eat it up. This scroll that's opened like the heavens rolled out in a great scroll now. And you see... That the first seal took him off the intercessory and put him on the Son of David throne. The second seal put him in the, uh, took the sin away from you and took you all the way back beyond the Garden of Eden, all the way back into eternity and took all the sin off you. And the third seal made you a Hebrew and called you out of the world. So now you see you are, not only did he leave the intercessory from the Gentile dispensation, but he made you a Hebrew so you could still worship him as son of David. Amen. And he took all of your sin away. And then in the fourth seal, he showed us that the Antichrist and the Christ become incarnate in the earth. And then in the fifth seal, he raptured us from this over into the sixth dimension and let us see ourselves in the mountain, in the, in the cloud, over there, him fellowshipping with us, and then us coming back here. And then in the sixth seal, he showed us that the Moses and Elijah ministry, Revelations 10, Malachi 4, Revelations 11, was breaking open into the earth, and Christ was moving after the rapture, after the second coming, 
after the opening of the seals, when the third coming was coming on the scene, and we seen all that in the scroll, that was opened up in the scroll, and then, when all that was opened up in the scroll, here comes the prophet, the seventh angel, omitting the seventh seal. You say, Brother Parnell, what is the seventh seal? Revelations 10, 8 through 11. Find me one place in Brother Branham's message where he talked about it. Show me anywhere where Brother Random talked about. There's, there's only one place where he talked anything about John eating the book and it typing the bride. The seventh seal is Revelations 10, 8 through 11, and Brother Branham hid that from the people. He never went and touched Revelations 10, 8 through 11. He never messed with it. He never touched it. He never tried to interpret it. He never talked about himself going and prophesying to many nations, tongues, and kindreds again. He never talked about himself doing that. He only said in the invisible union of the bride, Lord, if you can use me, your servant is here and ready. He said, this is the revival of the bride. But Brother Branham never broke down 10, 8 through 11. Why? It was the seventh seal coming on the scene. It was Christ. The seventh seal was moving from a prophet into a bride. It was going to move into many tongues and kindreds and nations. And the bride was the next thing to come on the scene, the prophecy of where the seventh seal was going. And Brother Branham knew that he would have nothing to do with that ministry, that he had to go off the scene. And that ministry had to come after him. So he never broke it down. He never talked about it. It was a strange language. It was an unidentified language. It was an unknown language. And here we are fulfilling that language. We are the fulfillment of what he seen pass before him on that day. And he said, I'll have to keep it in the grave. So we see this. It says, Now, and the voice which I heard from heaven spoke unto me again and said, Go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. So this angel is standing upon the sea and upon the earth. This angel's got his feet placed, sea and earth. And if you want to find out what the sea and the earth are, go over into Revelation 13. Take a good look at Revelation 13, verse 1. It said there was a great beast that came up out of the earth. And in Revelations 10, 13, and verse 11, it said, And there was a great beast that came up out of the sea. So what did the prophet do? What did the angel do when he came? He put his foot on the one beast in, in the, the earth. He put his foot on the other beast in the sea. Catholic, dogma, creed, lies, politics, everything else. And Protestant was just as bad as the Catholics. And here come the angel of the Lord, opened the seals, stepped out, a couple of months later and screamed out, I indict this generation for the second crucifixion of Jesus Christ. What was going on? You can't have a second crucifixion unless you had a second coming, I don't think. <laughs> Somebody said, oh, we haven't had a second coming of the Lord yet. Well, what in the world did he indict the generation for then? <laughs> How in the world could he indict somebody for crucifying somebody that's not even here? That's right. Amen. Amen? And that's what people get all mixed up with. Brother Branham said over in the anointed ones at the end time, I, I won't go over and read it, I got it here, but he said, I want you to go out there, he said, look in the corner of the Branham Tabernacle in that cornerstone at what I wrote down and put in there. He said, I wrote that there would come a day that they would not endure sound doctrine, they would have itching ears, teachers with itching ears, and so on and on and on. <coughs> he said, I put in there exactly what he told me at the river. And he said, you go to the cornerstone and look and see if what I put in there about the teachers leaving the Word and the river, he mentions it twice, he said, go and see if it has not come to pass. Oh, so the second coming did come to pass. What God told him on the river did come to pass. But people still waiting on a second coming. 
when Brother Branham declared in anointing once the end time, go look in the cornerstone. I told you there was coming a second coming, and it has come to pass. It's over. And people are still looking for that second coming. That's why they don't see a body change. That's why they don't see a resurrection. That's why they don't see a rapture. Because they miss the second coming. He got up in the questions and answers on the seals that Sunday morning. He said, I see you missed it. But don't worry. Just live your Christian lives. Just keep going on. And it's like he said, it's just like there are, there are things, uh, people and voices and images moving through this building right now. And they are right now, here tonight, 2006. Images moving through this building right now, and you do not see them with your natural eye. There are voices going through here. You do not hear them with your natural ear. You need a receiver to pick those things up, or you'll never hear it. Now, if we had a radio in here, and we went over that radio, and we clicked it on, you could pick up all kinds of voices. If we had a TV in here, you could go over and click it on. That TV does not manufacture that picture. That picture is caught into the TV, into the tube, and it, and, and it brings that image through and lets you look at it, at what's going on out there in a world that you cannot even see. And Brother Branham said it's just like that. In other words, I am speaking a voice that you can't hear. There are images of six-dimensional people in here that you can't see, but I can hear them and I can see them and they are real. And don't you worry about it. You go on and live your life. There will come a people who will pick this up, understand it, and move forward. Amen. That's what he was saying in the questions and answers on the seals. Now, we see this. He says, take the little book. Take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel, which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. So he... He, he condemned every, listen to me, he condemned every other revelation. He condemned every other doctrine. He condemned putting a foot on one beast, putting a foot on the other, and declaring that time shall be no more. They're dead, Brother Allen. I don't care how many times they go to that intercessory. I don't care how many books they read until they eat this scroll of the seven seals and understand the new age that we have entered, they can walk around it all they want and never taste it one time. That's how sacred it is. That's how secret it is. It's here. It's voices and it's images. But they won't pick it up unless they go by a receiver, so to speak. Unless they go get a receiver get into these things that the prophet said and get tuned in. You know, you can have a radio and not get a thing on it. I'm good at that. <laughs> I can get a lot of static. <laughs> Play around with this and that and the other. That's about all I'm good at is getting static on them. But <laughs> that's what people do. You need to tune in. Tune in to the opening of the seals and it will wake you up to everything. Amen. So, he said, I went unto the angel... And said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it and eat it up. And it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. The prophet, seventh angel, had the book in his hand, a scroll, wide open. And it has laid here for 40 years. It is laid here since 1963, 40, 43 years now. The scroll has laid here and had everything that we ever needed in it to enter into a new day, to enter into a, a real new day. I'm not talking about just some man-made agenda that's got a few new things to it, but absolutely have entered into an eternal day, a new day through the opening of these seals and through us. We were the people, when God spoke to Ezekiel, and said, take this scroll and eat it up, son of man. That was you. You were, you're the word that was here. The scroll had already been preached by the prophet. It had already been put here. And you are the Ezekiel that took the time to hear the word of the Lord. And the Lord speaking to you and saying, go get the scroll. We did that. 
as a church, go get the scroll and eat it up. And when Ezekiel went and ate the scroll, then God said, go out and send an angel and mark all those that are sighing and crying for the abomination of Israel. Well, they don't look at it as an abomination. The stuff they have out here in this message, they look at it as great stuff. When it's an abomination. And here we are as a church and as a group of people across the world that are understanding this scroll now that we've picked up and ate and we're crying to the top of our voice. We're looking at the abomination of Israel and the angel of the Lord, the angel of death is moving through the camp and dealing and killing and slaughtering everything that's turning down, everything that's walking away from this Everything because it's not what Don Parnell preached. It's a scroll that was already here. It's a scroll that had been laying there for 40 some years. And the angel of the Lord came to me and said, go there and eat it up. And I did. I went there. I began to look at things. And he said, give me the little book. John, the bride. He said unto me, Take it and eat it up, and it shall make thy belly bitter. But it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. In other words, you got a lot of mechanical things wrong. You got a lot of problems. And when you swallow it, when you eat it, when you accept that scroll, it's going to change everything. You're going to get nauseated. You're going to get sick. You're not going to understand things. You're going to wrestle things around. You know why? Because you're giving up the drugs that the men had you on. You ever see a man give up drugs? You ever see a man that's, I've done it. I've gone down to the detox places. I work with, I'm, I work a, I have a career as HR. I've seen men go cold turkey. I've seen men, they had to put drugs in them to bring them off the drugs they were on. I've seen them day after day as they're losing their hair, as their eyes glass over, as they start losing weight like mad, they start losing their memory, they don't know who they are for days. Why? Because they were on something that a man got them on so that he could have gain off of them and live off of them for a period of time. And that's what has went on. They've had people in this message, in the world, on denomination, and everywhere else, they've had them on drugs. And they've got him so, them so hooked up into the things, the dogmas and the creeds and everything else that they will kill you over those drugs thinking they're doing God a service. They will kill you over those dogmas and creeds and everything else thinking that they're doing God a service. And what you have to do is be patient enough that when you have somebody that's listening, you keep bringing them off of those drugs. And if they don't want off of them, believe me, they'll find them one way or another. Right. They got a one off. So here he is. He said, Give me the little book. And when he did, all those mechanical issues started to change. You know what we changed? Take, take some time when you go home between now and the weekend and think about. How many places? Sit down at a table somewhere. Get you a pen and a piece of paper. And just think about how many places you've changed in the last year and a half. Especially in the last eight months or so. Just think about how many places you... And just jot it down. Just jot it down and when you're done, just take a day and you'll go back to it every once in a while and sit down. When you're done, you won't have... If you just got one sheet of paper there, you won't have enough. You'll have to get another sheet. <laughs> we have changed that much because we started coming off man-made doctrines, man-made ideas, man-made things. The heaven opened like a scroll to us. We've ate the whole scroll now. It's wide open to us. The, the word of the Lord is, is plenty, and we're eating on it. And he said it would be bitter in your belly, sweet as honey in your mouth. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up, and it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. And he said unto me, you can't even do this. You cannot even do Someone said, oh, we got a great ministry. We go all over the world. We go to 17 different nations. I've been overseas 23 times. I hear it all the time. 
You can't even do 10 and verse 11 until you do verse 9 and 10. Eat the little book and change your mechanics. Change your doctrines. Change your ideas. Change everything about you. Change the very, change the vision, the view. Change yourself. Walk out of the church ages. Do like I said, I think it was Thursday night or Sunday. Get on your hands and knees in front of that little prophet, that servant, and, and dump everything off and crawl through that little gateway, that little hole into the king's chamber and get up and stand before him stripped down. Amen. And then you can do verse 11. And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. When? When you've given up all of your mechanical issues, you've given up all of your man-made doctrines, and you've come back to the real truth, and you took the scroll, you took the opening of the seven seals. That's right. You took... What God gave to a prophet on Sunset Mountain. And you took it and you ate it up. And you accepted everything you read. You accepted everything that was preached. You accepted every place that he... And he knocked my socks off some places. I thought, i got to start over there. i, I got to start over. But you eat it all. Every bit of it. And you change and you get rid of what you had. And you know what? Then you're ready. Amen. Then you're ready. Then you can look at the whole scroll <clears throat> opened up. You can watch people run for the hills. You can watch them run for the rocks. You can watch them run every which way. And you can see the ones who are saying, give me more. Amen. You can't even have a vision till you eat this scroll that we just went through. We've gone through the scroll. Now we're just going to go through some questions. We're going to go through... The, the seventh seal and how that seventh seal dealt with Brother Branham and how he had to hide all that. We're going to go through all that. We're going to look at it, but I wanted to show you, you've come through the scroll now. How many accepted everything that was in that scroll? Amen. Amen. You know what you did? You let the death angel pass. It got a lot of people. It picked up a lot of them. But you let the death angel pass. Because that's what's out there. If you don't eat this scroll, you're headed into a place without a mercy seat. The only place there's a mercy seat is inside the message of the hour. The way the prophet brought it at the opening of the seals. There's the only place there's a mercy seat. And everyone else passing it by, left and right, running by it, running by it. And thinking they're doing God a service, not even in his will. Dying left and right. Death everywhere, throughout the camps, everywhere. But we had a mark in our forehead. You know what that mark was? The angel went out first and he marked the forehead of everyone that was sighing and crying for the abomination of Israel. That mark was this scroll that you just finished eating. You made yourself safe, Sister Amy, by eating that book. You made yourself safe by accepting these seals the way the prophet preached it. You're safe from the wrath of God. You're safe from the hand of God. You're safe from the devil. You're safe from the death angel as he goes through the land. You're safe from everything. God did that for you. You know, and, and there were times when... <clears throat> I'll be honest, I thought about going another way. I thought, I'm just going to get out of this. It'll be real easy to slide on over here and get out. And uh, we'll go to something else. And I'll tell them we'll get back to the seal someday. <laughs> but the Holy Spirit said, no, 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 son. Where is the promise of his coming? What does he do? The second coming, he said he would come and get us. As his bride, St. John the 14th chapter. He said he would bring us a restoration of the bride. And he did that. He did every bit of that in the book of Joel. It tells us what would happen and how that restoration would come. And the prophet stood right before the opening of the seals and preached the restoration of the bride tree. And it happened. 
He said that there would be a last sign come to the church, a messiah ministry, and Melchizedek would stand in a human being. In Matthew 24 and in Malachi 4, it happened. We've seen it. He said that the, the promise of the body change would come, and it had to come before we were raptured. We had to have a body change, and it happened. He took us off of the intercessory, put us on the throne of David, and changed the entire body where we don't have to go to that mercy seat anymore. We don't have to go to intercession. We are changed. These are the things that are in that scroll that's changed your life forever. The prophet, he, the promise of body change, we change from intercessory, mediation, mercy seat, lamp. We went from a lamb to a lion. We went from a prophet to a king. The rapture, it happened. What is a rapture? It is the catching away of the bride. He caught us away in the fourth seal. He took us into the sixth dimension in the fifth seal. And he showed us the judgment of the Lord in the earth in the sixth seal. And we were caught away to what? A meeting in the air. Did it happen? We got a picture of it right back there. It happened. See all these things that went on. <clears throat> They're still looking for them all to happen. And you are so blessed that we took the time to get into this scroll and see that it's all already happened. I'm not looking for a moon to turn to blood. I'm not looking for two prophets to Israel. I'm not looking for a tribulation period. I'm not looking for a, for a thousand year millennium. I'm not looking for any of those things because we were taught better than that through this scroll. The word body w went to the meeting in the air. That was us. He took us there. Then he said the word would be revealed, Revelations 10 and 11. What happened? The opening of the seals. We come back from the meeting in the air, and right straight away, within one week, he was standing opening the seals, revealing the word body, opening the seals, bringing the two prophets on the scene, changing from son of man to son of David, within a week after we had our meeting in the air. Revelation 19 said he would come back with his wife. We did that. We went with him. He took us away, and we came back with him. Revelations 19, we came back with him, and he's here now after the rapture. It's the word body being revealed. It's a new government in the earth. That's what he said he would bring, a third coming, a new government. Revelations 10.1 brought that new government into the earth just exactly like he said it would. The new kingdom, the third coming... <clears throat> new heaven and earth, eternity, what are we doing? We're going back into eternity. It's no creation now. The creation is falling away. We're, we're going back into eternity. Everything's fading away. The son of David ministry takes us there. And he put his wife on display and then brought us back for the judgment, the great gathering. And we're doing that now. We're judging all things. How are you doing that? Because the heavens is open like a scroll. You love him? Amen. We've seen the six seals fulfilled. It's right before our eyes. Don't ever let a man tell you any different. What are we doing now? Living out the seventh seal. That's why it was so omitted. It was so hidden. It was so secret. Because it is the seventh seal now. We're living it out. Christ himself here in third coming and in new government and in his people for the final manifestation of revelations 10 8 through 11 you love him Amen. so we get a song ready i love looking at these things and we will go into after easter's over we'll get right into the questions and answers and the and the seventh seal and I probably won't go through every one of the questions the ones that are really pertinent to the seals we'll go through and uh, then we'll get into the seventh seals we all stand and we'll see how brother Branham hid that thing so perfectly so that we could manifest ourselves on earth once again Jesus here in his third coming. Walking on earth, 
revealing himself as the bride of Christ, taking over every government, trampling down everything. It said that he would do that, that he would trample down everything. He's done that. He's trampled it down. He's walked over top of everything. He's put everything under his feet. Just like Gideon, everything has gone under his feet. A great uh, cake had rolled down out of the mountain and crushed everything. A great stone had rolled down out of the mountain and crushed everything in Daniel. We've seen it all happen. It's going on all around us. Brother Jerry. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I'm a child of the King's His royal blood Now flows through my veins And I, who was wretched And so poor, now can sing Praise God I'm a child of the King. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Do you know? I'm a child, I'm a child of the King. Of the King's. His Look at the scroll that you've eaten. Now, close through my veins. Amen. Praise God. That's where you were at. Wretched and poor. But now you can see. I am a child of the King. Once I was clothed in the rags of my sins. Wretched. Standing on the outside of the church, a perfect masterpiece. Not like the church ages. Wretched, poor, vile, naked, and don't even know it. Now you can see. Praise God. I'm a child of. I'm a child of the King and His royal blood now flows through my veins and I who was wretched and, and so bold Amen. now can see praise God I'm a child of the King. Amen. You love him? Yes. Love him with all of my heart. A child of the King. We've done so many things. But now it's all in his hands. We have the revelation of Jesus Christ. What Brother Branham was looking at all the days. From the opening of those seals till the day he died, you're staring it right in the face now. You see it. You see it. That's why. Now when we go to all of his messages, and we're going to go through them. We, we didn't go through those seals just to say, whoopee, now we're in this day. 
No, he went right on and opened many, many, many more things from the opening of the seals. And watch when you go into those books now. Knowing the groundwork. Sometimes, there's some places I've read it has a whole different meaning to me now than it did before because I got Brother Branham, the Holy Spirit's idea on it now. And even though he preached it in February of 65 or August of 65, you can carry that thought all the way back to that seals and know that he's talking specifically about something he opened there. So be ready, because we're just now getting into this new day. He sings one more time. Oh, yes. Oh. Oh 